Enduro isn't like most sports. It's a competition that's really only made up of three lines. The start line, the finish line, and the racing line. Between those lines, few sports let you get this close to the action. And very few sports offer this much action to get close to. Baseball has Wrigley Field. European football has Old Trafford. And if mountain biking has a theater of dreams, it's probably here, the French Alps. It's the first time we've met in the French Alps in about three years, I think. And we've been in the Pyrenees the last couple of years, and it's so cool, to be honest. I'm loving it. Long stages, which is sick. The more race time we have, the better it is. I like these uh, longer, longer. Maybe like it means like the gaps are bigger, but um, that's when endurance comes into it. On any given race day, if you scan the start list early in the running order and long before the recognizable names contending for the win show up, you'll find them. The privateers. I was on a factory ride for two years, but. I had a big injury and I'm coming back from it this year as a full privateer. To me, a privateer is someone who's fully self-funded. Um, you know, they're getting their own way to the races. They're probably their own mechanic. Find a nifty van to get you through the season that's not going to break on you halfway through it. I travel with a few friends just to keep the cost down, but all things are by myself. Drive themselves around the groceries, making food. They sleep in a van, buy their bikes, pay to go to the races. Really a, a shoestring budget, maybe getting a little support from a few brands here and there. They spend a lot of time in car parks being dirt bags. There's not a lot of time to really focus in on how you're going to execute your run. Probably work a job in between rounds or in the off-season, uh, which I think that's a huge factor into someone's training and success. When I started riding seriously and riding enduro, I just kind of accepted the fact that if I wanted to do that, I did it on my own. This is early van life. Uh, me, my mom, and my sister Deborah. I spent weekends as a child in a van with my dad somewhere in Ireland, trying to sleep in the back of a van in the middle of all these motorbikes. And yeah, me, my sister, and my dad. As you can see, there's a really high tech bed built across here with some pillows and mattresses. Yeah, dad was kind of known for always having not the best camper conversions. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, van life has always been in me. What set the base, I guess, for my career? The most affordable way for me to race the summer season in Europe was to just drive down, park up a van, and then that was that was my house for the for the summer. Ciao, boys. How's it going? Nice setup. This is one of the more basic. We got the old fold-out bed with a mattress. You know, I'm I'm really really happy I did the van life thing, and there are certainly times I miss it. This is like a luxury version of my old van. The fire. The fireplace. There's a fireplace yeah, in this yeah. van, lads. Everything you need is within arm's reach. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I've got so much respect for anyone who, who goes out and does it the privateer way, and there's so much preparation involved in a race weekend. It's a pretty huge task to take on by yourself. Perhaps in the not-so-distant future, the names of privateers like Ella Connolly oh, yeah. or Cole Lucas may be burned into the collective consciousness of mountain bike fans. But until then, it's the factory riders that receive the recognition and the support. A factory racer is someone who is sponsored by the factory. Each brand will have, you know, some kind of factory team or direct support to the rider. The entire focus of every single person around that racer is to make them go faster. Mostly everything is taking care of you. You're given the best gear that all your sponsors offer. You don't think about anything. You just open your email, there's your flight, there's your bike. <laughs> you have a mechanic at every race. In our case, we have a team manager and a physio. Someone's helping them cook the food and someone's paying all the bills. And I guess they're also getting paid. You just have so much more time to focus on what you have to do. And also just like being on a team was really cool. 
I don't want to say family, because like that kind of gets like overplayed. But like these guys are like my brothers, man. If you're doing well, you know, that's when the sponsors really start coming towards you and they want to do this video and this photo shoot. Yes, there's obligations from sponsors uh, outside of racing and at races right now. Yeah, it's great for your image, it's great for the brand, but then if, you know, if you're going to do a photo shoot, that's day of training sacrifice. So, you know, you then get to the race and you've probably missed a day of training to your competitors. And obviously, as people start investing more into you, you think they are going to want a bigger return than what they originally signed up for. And that comes with, like, extra pressure. Originally, when we set out my plan for the season, we planned that I would do six World Cups and six Enduros. After last weekend, we sat down and we were like, well, I was only going to go to Andorra because I like racing in Andorra. I was like, oh, I can't decide because I want to do both. So we flipped a coin. <laughs> you literally flipped a coin? Yeah. After the race, flipped a coin. And then I sent Bernard the message and said, I'm going to uh, Les Ors. And he was like, all good. Hell yes. <laughs> turn, turn yeah. Eddie Mazur is one of a kind. Originally, I think he was doing the Enduros just for, for training, for downhill, and for fun, because he loves to ride his bike. I always liked the Enduro format. I just think that they complement each other really well. He's also a you know, top 10 downhill rider, and uh, you see him switch back and forth between the two, and this season he's had really, really good success at both disciplines, and there's not a lot of guys in the world that, that can do that. Wise man once told me if you're ever nervous, stop the stage, do the shoulder shuffle. So you look that ridiculous, you can't take yourself seriously. My upper body, kind of staring at my front wheel. <laughs> but uh, I'm just trying to like, not make huge mistakes, not crash, like, just maintain. I just like came around the corner and it was just like some old lady like right beside the track and I just like got distracted, clipped a stump, crashed, got up and enough from break and then just crashed again. Hit my shoulder pretty hard but hopefully nothing to worry about. Every race that doesn't go well it just motivates me more and more to to prove you know to myself more than anything that I have the speed, I have what it takes to, to be at the sharp end. The beauty of bike racing is that the clock is unconcerned with whether you're full factory or living in a van down by the river. All that matters is time. That was intense, little fella. Really, really positive again for me. Like I've, I've struggled all season, to be honest, and this is the first race I've felt like I've actually been attacking and riding aggressively, so really, really happy with that. After seven stages of racing in France, we find ourselves here. In a situation that pretty much every privateer and professional who has ever raced a bike has probably daydreamed about. One run to rule them all. If I could concentrate my power.
Thanks for missing Andorra now. I feel like I've worked hard for this. The nature of being a professional mountain biker means that except for a very select few, you'll always lose more races than you'll win. It's the bitter truth that makes the champagne taste that much sweeter. A cold reality that makes the smiles on the podium that much warmer. Awesome, I'm lost for words. Never in my wildest dreams would I thought I'd win one of these things, so, and what a race. To put together the winning formula on race day takes equal parts training and tenacity. Speed mixed with the right amount of support. And sometimes, a little luck. Next on On Track. Back in Disneyland for adults, basically. Whistler is unlike anywhere else. You never know what you're going to get when you come to Whistler because they have so many tracks to choose from. You know, part of Enduro is being able to dig deep and suffer and manage that effort during a stage. Having a real good stage here. Just living the dream.